Here we have a 1999 Jeep Cherokee XJ. We are actually uh, tearing down the motor. This is Tyler Hensley right here, and he is our uh, he is our pro. <laughs> yeah. Size machine. Um, so what we've got here is we've got an XJ. Um, the problem that we're having with it is it's overheating. Uh, he's already replaced the water pump, put a nice um, big radiator in it, does as much flush as he could. It's doing everything that he can possibly do with it. Unfortunately, it's still overheating. Um, some of the issues that we're having with it is that the upper hose is warm, but the radiator itself is cold. Uh, lower hose is cold, so we know we're not getting the flow through uh, the block that we should. Uh, we've bled it, we've bled all the air out. We know there's no air in it. Um, brand new water pump. Basically anything, all the accoutrement on the outside of the uh, engine has been replaced. Um, everything that he can do externally wise. So there's one of two things that's still left. Um, either we have a blockage in the block, um, uh, which is creating a, a situation where the water is not actually uh, able to flow through the block and out into the radiator, um, or we actually have a bad head, bad head gasket. Um, there's two reasons why we think we have a bad head gasket. One of them is um, we're losing coolant all the time. Every time we open this up, there's always air in the system. Um, second, uh, when we open up the uh, 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 coolant uh, reservoir, you can actually smell the um, exhaust gas in the coolant reservoir. So we are guessing that there's a bad head gasket. So we're in process of pulling that gasket off of this. Um, hopefully here shortly, we should give you a quick video of it off. Um, disengage the air, the air filter here. Um, Fuel injectors, throttle, uh, throttle body, valve covers got to come off. Um, we've got the, the AC compressor off, uh, power steering's off in the front. Uh, there's one bracket on this side and then the whole thing comes right off. Uh, I think we're gonna try and get the intake and exhaust off with the head and then we'll separate them once they're off. Uh, that's the easiest way to get it off of here. All right, so you, as you can see, uh, Tyler has tore into this thing and exposed quite a bit of the engine at this point. Um, we have pulled off the power steering pump. We've pulled off all of the covers. I'll let him go from there. Um, so we've got the head off of it. Um, obviously pulled the intake and everything, got the head off. Um, as we were getting the head off, we noticed that there was some coolant coming out of, um, out of the side of the block. Um, and as we get into it a little bit further, you can actually notice right here, you can see the ceiling ring actually go all the way around, the silver go all the way around the, the entire bore. Um, there's a couple of spots that might be a little bit dark, but as you get closer to the center of the engine, the ceiling ring is actually disappearing. Um, and right here, it's actually completely gone, which means that the we were getting blow by. So every time this cylinder um, lit off, you know, every time it sparked and it lit, it would actually blow its compression into this cylinder vice versa into the um, cavity. This this uh, area right here is where the cavity in the head sits for the cooling system. So it was pushing it from cylinder to cylinder and also into the head as well. So that's where we were getting um, the majority of the problems and overheating that we were coming across. Um, uh, from we here, originally thought that we might have had a blown head gasket, but this is with, with uh, what Tyler has found right here, this might possibly be a warped head, correct? Correct, so because it's in the middle, um, the center, and it gets worse right in the center, and it, as you go out toward the, towards the ends, it gets a little bit better. That's usually an indication of a, um, a, a bad cylinder head or a warped cylinder head. Um, because it got overheated to the point where it shut off, I'm hoping that it's just um, an issue where the, the center of the engine obviously got hotter than the rest of it. So I'm hoping that it's just part of that, but we're gonna measure up that head tonight and see kind of where we're at with that. And as you guys can see, that is radiator fluid in there that you can see in there. That is never a good sign to see inside there on top of those pistons. You do not want to see that. Uh, Tyler, go ahead and explain. We have uh, on these cores, these inline sixes um, with these uh, 4 liters, there are two different types of cores um, and you can find those numbers. Uh, Tyler, explain a little bit about the two differences of those cores that we were looking at and what we have here. So here's our head that we uh, pulled out. We're looking for is there are two different numbers that we have on these heads and where you can find these, you can see he's scratching those over right there. You can you can notice that it says 0610. 0630. 0630. If you have a double three, um, you end up looking right here in the center of the head. So right down the very, right down the, you can actually open up the um, oil filler cap itself. Um, shouldn't set that down. Look right down through the head and if it says uh, Tapui um, T 
APY, TAPY, whatever it is. You can see that um, right there. Yep. There, this head doesn't need it because it's the good casting, but if you have the 633 head um, with the Tapui in it, then you might have a cracked head. At this point, we've taken off the the uh, fan and the fan clutch. We've, we've also taken off the secondary fan here to open this up right over here so we have more room. We're going to end up pulling the whole block out. Uh, Tyler's underneath there right now getting the starter off. And we uh, got everything pretty much disconnected up here, as you can we see. We have a wrench on the front of the flywheel, and we're spinning it because we have to loosen or take off the bolts that are on the converter. What we're doing up, up under here, let's see we've got a really good picture there. Hard to see, there's a fork, torque converter bolts that sit up inside of here, the little plate comes off the side, and then you gotta undo these four torque converter bolts. And if you don't undo these, you won't be able to separate the engine from the transmission because there's just not enough distance in there to get the engine forward far enough to clear it out of the um, clear the input shaft from the transmission out of the torque converter. So you have to undo these bolts. And then once the bolts are out, um, everything else comes right out and the engine pops right out. So I'm gonna get Tyler's face right here so you can't see anything. I don't know if you guys can see it right there. That's what we're looking at. Reason it takes a wrench to get it all the way out. There's Tyler's big thumbnail. Yep, that's the one right there. That guy right there. There's the bolt that we're trying to get off. We have, I believe, four of those. Yep, you can this see is the last there. one. So as soon as this comes off, now that's your torque converter. Wow. There we go. There we go. Separated. And there's four of them. So at this point, we have everything disconnected. You can see here kind of how this works. I've got a wrench on the front flywheel here. And as you can see, for those of you that have never seen how these pistons move, if you turn that, you'll see these pistons move up and down here, which is kind of cool. A lot of people never get to see this inside the engines. But this is how the pistons move up and down. And you know, you just keep keep pumping and pumping. So there you have it. There is your six cylinder. Pretty cool. We have two bolts left that we need to take out. And those two bolts are the motor mounts. This is the one motor mount right here. And then through this mess is the other motor mount right there. But before we can take these off, we've got to get this connected to an engine hoist because this thing will drop. So our next step is to connect it to an engine hoist, undo those two bolts, and we'll be pulling out this sweet inline six four liter engine. All right, so little trick here because this sits so high this Jeep has a six and a half inch lift and we're sitting on 35 inch tires What we had to do is we had to flatten the tires in the front so we can lower this down as you can see We have the engine hoist Set up we have it mounted right here. We've actually taken off the Motor mount on that side. We've also taken off the motor mount on that side We now have two bolts back there once we get those two bolts off we are going to be free. This engine uh, will be ready to be pulled out. Um, as you can see, we have some of the parts right there. There's the exhaust manifold. That right there is a radiator hose, the electric fan, the secondary electric fan, the rotor cap, and the wires for the spark plugs. And then we have our other fan sitting over there. And we have the mastermind Tyler right, right here. Anything you wanna say? Uh, hello internet, how are you? Well said, well said. All right, we are under the vehicle. Uh, we put a jack up right here. We're supporting the transmission plate. Uh, once we separate those two bolts that are up on top, that will keep this transmission from dropping down and uh, separating too far. And we'll put a strap up in the front of the motor there uh, to be able to support that as well. So. Um, just remember that when you do do this, it is important that you support the transmission to keep it as level as you possibly can and to prevent it from falling. All right, here we are. We have pulled the engine. You can see right there, we have the transmission exposed and the engine is out and we have brought it over here. Right now, we 
are draining the oil. So you wanna make sure that you take that, uh, that oil plug out, drain the oil from there. And then we are gonna disassemble this whole block. We're gonna take off the pulleys, we're gonna take off the water pump, and we will break down each piece after that. Okay, so we have pressure washed the block. We've got it as clean as we can get it at this point. Uh, you can see we've taken off the end of the, this end right here. We've got the timing cover, timing chain off. We've got the camshaft out of it. We've got all the lifters out of it. Um, we're working next on getting the um, crankshaft gr uh, girdle out of it. And then we can start pulling all of the rods. Um, once the rods are out with the pistons, then we can get the uh, caps off, the main caps. So the main caps come off and we have a crankshaft out of it and she's empty. Um, we are gonna replace all the bearings. So we are gonna pull all the bearings. Uh, we're gonna take it over to the machine shop and have them uh, machine the, the, the head surface itself so that it's all nice and flat for us. Um, maybe get us just a tiny bit more power, taking a little bit out of there. Um, but for the most part, she's just about there. So one of the things that you can see, um, you can see these rings right here. This is actually a good seat for your rings. This is a good seat for your rings, but as we start to get over here, you start noticing that it's getting a little bit of burn through right here. You can see right here, it's burning through, which is an indication that we have a warped head. So we're gonna have it machined uh, just to be safe and we'll have a nice clean surface on there. Here is the other side. And then just kind of a look for all you guys that have never seen inside of a engine. This is kind of what, uh, what it looks like. So this is the top of the pan. And what we are doing is, is we are taking off the, uh, there was a liquid gasket that was on the edge here. You can see all this liquid gasket that is here. You gotta make sure that you clean these surfaces and have them perfect for the new gasket. Right here, I have grinded this down and uh, getting everything down to a solid surface, nice, clean, and smooth. Just using a drill to get that done with a buffing wheel. And I am going to end up painting this. Uh, next time you see this, you're gonna see, I'm gonna paint it all red. So we have a really nice looking uh, red pan on the top. So a valve cover. Here I am at uh, Clegg's Automotive here in Orem, and they are going to be resurfacing the head and resurfacing my valve block. Uh, as you can see right here, we have uh, gone through this before, but you can see the burn through that we have coming through right here. We did find out that we do have a warped head. So this process, basically we're gonna have this whole thing cleaned and this, this surface is gonna be re-machined and surfaced. And then we have over here the valve. Uh, this surface is also going to, going to be cleaned and resurfaced as well. So when we get this back, it'll be nice and shiny. Uh, this surface here and this surface here will be able to mate with no warp and we will have a good solid seal. Okay, just got back from the machine shop and picked up my valve head, which is right there. And you can see we got a nicely fresh, clean machined valve head as well as a machined block. Um, after talking to the guys, they ended up taking off 10 thousandths of an inch when they machined this. It is important to try to take as little as possible off of uh, these when you are having these machined but we no longer have a warped head. We are ready to go. There are no cracks in here. That has been tested. Um, this pretty much concludes the final stage of part one, um, disassembling the motor and doing the full rebuild. So please join us for part two as we put this all together, put the bells and whistles in there and uh, put some pretty products back on and uh, complete this engine rebuild. Appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you in part two.